So ChatGPT just released a show-stopping new tool for coding, and this tool allows you to work with live documents. Now in today's video, I'm going to teach you everything that you need to know about 4.0 with Canvas for coding. We're going to be covering how I created this budgeting tool using ChatGPT 4.0 with Canvas, how I worked through bugs, and how I added new helpful features. This will serve as an overview that gives you an idea of how you can create your own tools as well. First things first, let's go to the upper left-hand corner of ChatGPT and we're gonna turn on GPT 4.0 with Canvas. This is going to give us the power of the new coding tool inside of ChatGPT. Next, we're gonna give it our prompt. I said, create a simple personal budgeting tool using Python and Kinter. The app should allow users to enter income categorize expenses and display a summary of spending by category, include basic features like adding, editing, and deleting expense items. Let's send this off and see what Canvas has to create for us. So as you can see, it's popping open this tool on the right hand side here, and this is the Canvas window. You can pull it and push it either way, and you can see all of your code here updating live. The nice thing about this is I know exactly what I need to work with when it comes to my code portion of this answer because it still gives you a full answer, but it also separates out the code so that you know exactly what to paste into your document. If you hover over the upper right hand corner, you're going to see this copy tool right here. You can click copy. What I'm going to do next is just create a new folder on my desktop and I'm going to call this budgeting tool. And then I'm going to double click into that folder. I'm going to right click, show more options and open with code. If you don't have Visual Studio Code installed, you'll need to do that before you can run this program. You'll also need to install whatever other dependencies there are, such as Python and any libraries that you wanna use. I'll leave a link to Visual Studio Code and Python so you can check those out. I'm gonna hit open with code and I'm going to add a new file under this budgeting tool folder here. So I'll hit new file. I'm gonna name it budget.py. The name doesn't really matter as long as it ends in .py if it's a Python program like this is. And I'm now going to paste that code. And it gave us 124 lines of code to start with. So when you're working with a Python program, you can just hit this start or run code button in the upper right hand corner. And that's actually going to run the code for you. Now it's given me my personal budgeting tool here. So I can enter income, let's just say 100,000. I'm gonna set my income, hit okay. And now I'm going to enter my expense name. Let's just say gas and let's go $20. And for category, let's call it uh, personal. I'm gonna add expense. Let's also add software. For that, we'll go $1,000 business, add expense. And it's totaling up these expenses here. If I hit show summary, it's going to show me my income and it's going to show me in my expenses by category here. Before you go any further into this video, I have something I need to tell you about, and that is the AI Foundations community. This is where I learn everything about AI and where I also teach AI alongside my brother who runs a channel on YouTube called AI Foundations. We make AI content for free here on YouTube and we always have because we love to do it. We love to share these awesome tools. But if you want to up your network and get around some amazing people, I mean, we have a guy that built an app that has 300 million downloads. We have many multi, multi millionaires that join our calls and just talk about their businesses and how AI is affecting the landscape. And then we have a lot of just everyday people as well that are just trying to figure out how AI fits into their work. No matter who you are, you're welcome at AI Foundations, and I highly recommend you join AI Foundations. Use the link below before the price goes up. Now, what if you wanna make edits to your code? This used to be kind of challenging because you'd have to go and find the specific piece of code you were talking about, or you'd just have to grab all of the code inside of your code base and copy and paste it to give ChatGPT context. All right, so I'm gonna send off this feature request. I just asked it to add a pie chart showing the expenses and the income. So let's see what it does. It's going through, it's coding, it's editing. Now it's complete, it has a show pie chart button. So let's go ahead and copy our code. I'm gonna paste into Visual Studio and I'm gonna go ahead and run the code. We'll set the income to $10 just to keep it simple. Expense name, let's go with software. Let's make that $2 business. Add expense, we'll add another business expense of cleaning, I'm gonna make that three, add expense. And then we'll add gas, which will be $2, and that will be personal. 
So let's go ahead and add expense. So now we have two business and a personal expense. I'm gonna hit show pie chart. And as you can see here, it distributes it out into gas, software, and cleaning and shows me my budget on this nice pie chart here. I have one more feature request before we move forward here, and that is to show the remaining budget in a unique, helpful way, because right now it's just focusing on the expenses, but I wanna see what we have left to work with. All right, so ChatGPT has now added show remaining budget. Let's go ahead and implement this into our code. And now let's see how it works. So I'm gonna put $10 test, $2 business at expense and we'll show remaining budget. And it says I'm $2 over budget. Consider reducing my expenses. Did I hit set income? Okay. Maybe it'll work now. Okay. Yeah. So I had to hit set income. Now it's saying my remaining budget is $8. Keep up the good work. Let's see if I can add something else to this and then update. And yeah, it's actually keeping tally on that. Next, I intentionally made my program produce an error so that I can debug this and figure out what's going on. So I'm just gonna highlight this error right here and I'm gonna copy it over to the canvas. I'll paste it and I'll send it off. Now, since I broke the code outside of this window here, I'm going to just delete this. Just imagine that the code it gave us was broken and I'm gonna paste in the broken code. I can hover over our coding toolbar here and I can go up to fix bugs. If I hit fix bugs, it's gonna go through and actually fix all of those issues that I implemented into this on purpose. So it's going through finding all the errors and hopefully fixing them. All right, let's try to run this again. All right, and it's running with no errors down here. I wanna go over a few more features that you can tap into when you're coding using ChatGPT 4.0 with Canvas. So as we did before, we just hover over that right hand corner and now we can see code review, port to a language, fix bugs, add logs, and add comments. So I'll explain each of these quickly. For add comments, if I send this off, it's gonna go throughout my code here and it's going to insert comments so that I understand what's going on. That's these little green hash marked lines right here. It basically just tells you what the code is doing. And the syntax of your comment is going to change based on the programming language that you're using. Now I can see exactly how this thing works as I'm going through it and I can even ask questions. So I could say right here, uh, ask ChatGBT, is there a better way to do this? And it'll actually go through and think about that. Then I could say implement this and it's gonna go through and add that for us. Now you've already seen how fix bugs work, but there's also port to a language. If I click on port to a language, I can select which language I want to use. So they have PHP, C++, Python, JavaScript, TypeScript, and Java. These are the languages that they allow you to use. It doesn't mean that it doesn't have any knowledge of anything else, but this is what the Canvas window is focused on helping you with. Next thing we're taking a look at is the code review. And if I click on this and send it off, what this is going to do is it's gonna go through, review my code, offer up suggestions on how to improve things, and then I can go back and I can implement them piece by piece, or I can choose which ones I don't want to implement. As you can see, it says failed to comment. Now it's been doing this for me recently with this commenting feature, both on the writing side of things and in the coding side of things, when I hit that review or suggest edits. And I don't know why it's doing this. You know, it finds the comments for me here and then it goes through and adds more comments, but it's been failing to actually get those to stick in here. So I'm thinking it's a bug on ChatGPT's end. But one little workaround for this is to say, offer the suggestions in a list. And then it's gonna go through and offer up the suggestions that it had and you can implement the ones that you want to implement. So say we wanted to prevent duplicate expenses, we could do that. I could just say implement one like I did here and then that would send it off and it would actually implement that change that it listed out here. So that's just a little workaround for that feature if it's not working for you. I found that sometimes it's not working for me. But definitely let me know in the comments, what do you guys think of ChatGPT 4.0 with Canvas? Is it overhyped? Is it a new tool that you've added to your arsenal and now you can use it for coding? Let me know in the comments below and also check out this video if you're interested in writing with ChatGPT 4.0 with Canvas.